Music Business What Is This is a podcast that focuses on the ever-changing music industry and presents issues and concerns that the average and above average musician has or will encounter. Hey everybody, I'm Richard Johnson. I'm Jeremiah Hunt. And we are here with Music Business. What is this? Today we're going to be talking about ourselves. (laughs) That's right. No, we don't have egos. But we got some requests of people saying, well, we don't know anything about you guys. Um, Who put you in charge of this? Why are you authorities on music business? (laughs) Uh, First, I'm not an authority. I've had some experiences in my life. And I'm sharing them with all of you. So fortunately, we've had the means to make this happen. So we're just having conversations and we're letting you know about things we've come across. So hopefully you guys can avoid them. But today we're going to let you know a little bit how we ended up in the music business. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we need to know um, what's going on. So first, I'm going to ask Jeremiah a little bit about his history. And we're going to talk about how he became or is the great bass player he is today. So my first question is, um, you play acoustic and electric, right? Yep. Which one did you start on? I started out on electric. Okay. That's Mm -hmm. probably pretty typical, right? Yeah, I think it is. Most acoustic players start on electric. If you want to play upright, if you start out on upright bass, it's usually because you're in a classical setting Mm-hmm. Or you just really like the instrument. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you are, I mean, I guess for me, I was just, and it had a musical background, you know, musical family. So so you came from a musical family? I came, oh, well, I wouldn't say a musical family. Like none of my uh, family played instruments or mm-hmm. anything like that professionally. I have a cousin. Did they sing? I have a cousin who sings. Okay. So the yeah. voice, we talked a little bit about that in mm. our previous podcast. If you want to check it out, talking about the voice and is that an instrument or not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah, electric was my start. Actually, I started out playing keyboard. Oh, really? Um, keyboard. Uh, before I played electric. I didn't start out playing keyboard. So let mm. me rephrase. I started out playing trumpet. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We went from... Upright bass, electric bass, the keyboard, to trumpet. Just backtrack. <laughs> yeah, so you okay, just got to remember. So, yeah, 1998, uh, that summer, uh, going into the fifth grade, I started playing trumpet because my brother played, and I, I followed in his footsteps. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, but I stuck with the trumpet, and um, I ended up playing euphonium after that, so I was in the brass family. But then my... Uh, some of my best friends from elementary school, we stayed together through elementary school, middle school, and high school. We started a band uh, called the PM Experience. PM. PM. Oh, PM okay. stands for Picky Musicky, which is Swahili for play music. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I thought it stands for personally mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, he started this group and, um, yeah, I I played keyboard bass in it. That was like the easiest sort of situation mm-hmm. that I could have because he was already a trumpet player and there was another trumpet player in the band. So there's no point in me playing trumpet. A whole trumpet. band of trumpet players. A whole band of trumpet oh, players. Go to New Orleans. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, our mentor, you know, had me play keyboard. And eventually he just gave me a, an electric bass. And he said, I got this sitting in, you know, my, my garage. Gave it to me. Gave me a book. He gave it to you. Gave it to me. Not charge you. He didn't charge me anything. No he just, interest. He just said here. Here. And it worked. And and it worked. You didn't have to pay any maintenance. It didn't. just here. Here. Man. And yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And I took it home. And three days later, I came back and I was playing Chameleon. Oh, here we go. The typical <laughs> bass story. You only got to give a bass player three, four notes and they've got gigs. That That's right. never <laughs> happens on trumpet or piano. It's like Ever. you got to spend years. Bass players, I got a gig. I started playing yesterday. How's that even possible? So, yeah, so I guess the jokes and stereotypes are true. <laughs> it, they definitely can be you know you got to be really challenged, <laughs> challenged to, not, to, not, to not be able to right. play bass you know That's funny. um but yeah it was, it was a good starting point and um by the time i maybe a couple years five years later when i was in high school i went to a summer camp famu uh summer camp which is where i went to college um i, I picked up an upright i was at, 
initially there for the marching band camp, and I was playing marching euphonium in the marching band. You play camp. euphonium? Mm-hmm. I play euphonium. Well, yeah, that's a good, really cool. I made all state in euphonium. I didn't so. make all state. <laughs> I'm not that blessed. I was pretty good at euphonium. I'm, I'm proud to say okay. I was. Okay. I was one of the best euphonium players in the state. Wow, it's all state. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. But uh, yeah, so I was there for the marching band ca- camp, but uh, I went. It's you know one. We had a practice uh, time slot, mm-hmm. you know, where everyone just goes into the practice rooms and do their own thing. And I saw an upright bass in the practice room, and I picked it up. And because I already knew how to play electric bass, mm-hmm. I was like, okay, this can't be too hard. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I picked it up, I just fell in love with it. Oh, really? Yeah. You so, were like, money! Man, exactly. I must have saw them <laughs> in, yeah, right. <laughs> dollar bills. Exactly. <laughs> dollar, dollar bill, yeah. You dig? <laughs> So the next year I came back to my uh, high school and uh, I asked my orchestra director, you know, can I, can I play bass mm-hmm. uh, in the orchestra? And he was like, yeah. He wasn't like, make up your mind, trumpet, you're following him, keyboard, oh, bass. Well, the, we had an orchestra director and we also had a band director. Oh, okay, okay. So in a symphonic band, I played right. the euphonium. Oh, okay. But I asked, can I just switch over completely to bass? Wow, oh, okay. And then in the jazz band, I would just play electric and upright bass. Okay. And he was like, okay, you don't have to play euphonium, you can switch over to bass, but if you do, you have to be in the symphonic band playing bass as well. And I was like, Oh, Great. perfect, perfect. <laughs> so you could read music at that point? So I could read music by the Trouble and Bass Club at that point. Oh, yeah, that's crucial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> dope, mm-hmm. dope. So did you did you ever play in church or anywhere else? Um, any other situation, musical situation? I didn't play in church. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get the firsthand uh, knowledge of, uh, you know, just knowing all the church mm-hmm. chords and Hams stuff like and that. Chords, yep. But every now and then I would, uh, I, I went to church all the time. Mm-hmm. I still grew up in, so I still okay. got the. So you had it in the head, I had in it your in ear. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you so could was, be like, this ain't right. This yeah, is right. Exactly. Okay, I can go with this. This is cool. <laughs> exactly. And I've always paid attention to the music too uh-huh. while I was there. So um, yeah, so it was a good growing experience for me. Okay. And then. Then what happened? So you're in Florida and then you say, I'm going to Chicago and just jump in the car. What happened? Ah, that story is interesting. So I went to uh, Florida A&M University after mm-hmm. I graduated um, high school. And I went there for about a year and a half, two years, I give or take, because honestly, I really didn't like the college experience mm-hmm. um, personally. It's at like, that school? At, well, or just in general? J- I think just in general. Okay. I, I didn't were really there any parties. You don't like parties. There were You're parties, the but back then I didn't drink or smoke or anything. Okay. So, it, or I mean, not that you have to do that to right, have fun right, right, at a party, right. but it was like that's what everybody what did, was doing. You know, it okay. was just like okay. So I was just kind of a loner. I was just chilling, playing music by myself, or going mm-hmm. out to jam sessions, and that's really all I did. So it was like I'm doing this anyway. So mm-hmm. uh, ultimately, there was this opportunity. Um, that came up, my band director uh, had uh, knew someone who worked for Disney mm-hmm. uh, College Band. And so they had me audition for the Disney All-American College Band in 2009. And that's, uh, I made it. And best summer of my life. Oh, wow. So, that's a strong statement. Best mm, summer of my life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that that completely changed my uh, outlook on music and just uh, business as well because mm-hmm. they talked about the business uh, too. So 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 let's backtrack just a little bit. What Did you have to prepare anything for the audition? Yeah, it was a, like three tunes. Mm-hmm. We had to prepare a blues, which is pretty standard. Yeah, you know, yeah, jazz. You kind of have to know how to prepare. Uh, prepare uh, you should know a blues, blues. You definitely should. Today. <laughs> you should know a blues. <laughs> Hopefully you know blues. 12 bar blues. And if you don't, you should know blues. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> right. And um and I think like a couple scales. Okay. I had to just show them that I knew my scales, play okay. blues, and maybe like a Latin tune or something like that. Oh nice. You know, something diverse. Do some glorious stuff on. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly but yeah that summer it was the um it was a great summer because they had the jazz uh part of it where i would play upright but then i would also play bass drum in the marching 
Oh, section. so you got to dance. Mm-hmm. You got to be funky. With a <laughs> huge bass drum on my, you know, I'd handling see that. Get the photos out. Oh, my gosh. Their videos on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. Wow. They're up there. I'm looking. <laughs> Jeremiah Hunt. Bass drum. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and then immediately after that, I was in L.A. already, and I went straight from L.A. to Macau, China. To do- Wait a minute. You were in Florida, I thought. Mm-hmm. But the Disney All American College Band is actually in L.A. because it's in Disneyland. Oh, Disney okay. World. I was thinking Disney World. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I flew from Florida to California, Anaheim, California, and I did that program. How long was it? It was three and a half months. Okay. Just about yeah. Well, three months. Yeah. And um, my and uh, my cousin around that time, he's a singer, the singer that I told mm-hmm. you about. Um, he asked me to. Uh, do a gig in China uh, wow. right after that. So this was like a contract gig, you know. What so we you've been to China a couple times. It was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But this was Macau, China. So it's oh. like the Vegas oh. of, of China. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Vegas, China. Close Ooh. to Hong Kong. So, <laughs> yeah. So it was, I went straight over there. So how old were you? I was 20. I had just wow, turned 20. 20. Yeah. When I did that gig. Yeah, I remember 20. <laughs> I don't. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was good. It was a good experience. So you were playing what five nights a week, six nights a week? In the Disney College Band, I was playing. Let's see. I think it was five sets a day. Five days. Five a sets week. a day. Five sets a day. How long were the week. sets? Um, some of them were only like five minutes, maybe ten minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. When you say set to me, I'm thinking. Or seventy five mm, minutes. Yeah, no, because we were in the we were in the park, mm-hmm. so we would just march out. Oh, I know what you're talking would, about. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. We would do our thing do your thing, and, and then yeah, I know exactly leave. what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so very good. And then um, yeah, that, so Chicago. So uh, you're this, in L.A. This is where I'm driving to Chicago. <laughs> so I the Macau China thing. I was doing those contracts for three years on and off. So how long would you go for? I would go for, the, the first time I went, I went for three and a half months. Mm-hmm. Then I went to Singapore, and I I did that for three months. So you've been around. Mm. I didn't know that. <laughs> Most <laughs> okay. people don't. Yeah. <laughs> they like, assume, wow. you know, I just, I just thought he just <laughs> drove from Florida to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been around a little bit. Wow, okay. Um, and, and after that, I went back to Macau. I did another four-month contract there. Then I came back home. And by that time, I kind of knew, like, Okay, the the college thing is kind of out of the picture right now. I, mm-hmm. I'm just kind of happy, you know. I'm mm-hmm. in my 20s, like, and I'm kind of just doing what I want to do. I'm experiencing this music thing, even though it's in a pop setting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm still getting some experience, you mm-hmm. know, on how to do this. So, um, uh, by the time I went back in 2011 to Macau, that was my last contract there, and now. Was it with different bands? It was with time? the same band, same group, so mm-hmm. four people. Uh, it was actually nine or nine. Nine people. people. Mm-hmm. That's big. Yeah, because usually the contracts are for four people: a vocalist and rhythm section, mm-hmm. or five with a horn. Mm-hmm. But this wasn't jazz. This was. Um, oh, okay. And it was a really unique thing. They were calling us the best band in Macau. <laughs> wow. You know. So, a... so what was it? Funk, R and B. Or the name could... of it was Funky Deep. Okay, so we went from PM to Funky Deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we would play pop. You know, we would play pop music, top forties. Okay, but All we right. would jazz it some of it up a little yeah, bit. Right, right, Everybody right. was well versed in in jazz and. And all the other genres to the point where we would just make could... it sound easy. Okay, so here's a question: Did you like the other eight people? Yes. Okay. Because normally, once you get over three or four, there's some drama. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not to say that there wasn't drama. <laughs> right. There, was, right. Uh, there were times where no, I absolutely hated. Okay. <laughs> Everybody. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's normal. That's normal. And being so young, and keep in mind, I was the musical director the last two years I did it. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. My cousin made me the musical director of it, so I was in charge of everybody so you were that were older you were the manager tour manager road manager i was getting paid the most (laughs) (laughs) okay so now that you bring that up was the money good was it okay was it like because you say the most i know our listeners are like 
Ooh, mm. I want that gig. What is the most? <laughs> well, around that time. Um, I mean, because we're talking, what, 13 years ago, 12 years ago? Yeah, yeah, okay. around 12 or 13 years and ago. And it's a contract gig where you're playing every night? Yeah, you're playing every night. Well, you get one day off. One day, right. Normally so, overseas, it's six days a week. Yeah, and around, well, I didn't really think about it in terms of hours. Like mm -hmm. We had, you know, we talked about hours and stuff like that. It was just more so we just had um, a couple rehearsals during the beginning of the contract and then uh, we would just play six nights a week you mm. know, from 10, 45 until 3 a.m. Okay. Did they feed you? And they f we got free, you know, we stayed at the hotel. They fed us. They had right, a canteen right. uh, in, the, in the bottom of the hotel. So did you have to eat with the employees or did you get the customer food? Mm, we got the employee. Right, food. right. That's, yeah. You know, you got to be careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Some of it was good. Some of it, it was right. good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're doing that. And then how do you end up in Chicago? So there was this band called the Main Squeeze. And they are a funk, soul, rock and roll band. I met the drummer of this band while I was in the Disney All-American College Band. Okay. They, um, he played the quads. Okay. And um, so after my first contract in Macau, we went to Singapore. And I brought that drummer to Singapore with us. We needed a drummer. So I called him up. Hey, man, you want to come? And during that contract, he showed me this band that he was in, The mm -hmm. Man Squeeze. And then the summer after that, I subbed out a gig for their bass player in New York. Hmm. And so I I did a gig with them. It went really well. And so you took the, you took his gig. Well, I didn't. Take, I <laughs> you can be honest. Yet. <laughs> not got, yet. I not still yet. have to finish up with Macau. Not yet. Yeah. That, Optimal <laughs> word. Not yet. He's a killer. <laughs> that was still some time. But uh, in twenty, uh, let's see. So we got that was around 2010, 2011, okay. something like that. Then I went back to Macau, and the last contract in Macau. There was this competition that the, the hotel that I was playing at, they were hosting this competition called the Jazz and Blues competition. Mm -hmm. And a, a couple of people that I actually knew from uh, high school and, you know, from the States came and participated in it. The main squeeze uh, was a finalist in that competition and they came over to Macau and they actually won the competition. Wow. The $32,000 grand prize. Wow. And so okay. they went back and, and, Brought their sp and before they came over to Macau, they asked me, did I want to join the band? <laughs> and my contract was ending around that time. Oh, okay. Right after the competition, it would have ended. So it worked out perfectly. perfectly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Destiny. Destiny. Yeah. By the time I moved from Macau, I moved back to Florida for like two weeks, mm -hmm. said, good said my goodbyes, got rented a car, moved up to Indiana and joined this group. And so you were all, in Indiana? They lived in Indiana because they all went to school uh, at Indiana University. Okay. And then we all moved to Chicago together that September of 2012. Oh, okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Wow. Uh, I would have never thought any of that. <laughs> I learned a lot of good information today. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Wow, it's incredible. You know, some of the things I've taken away from what you've told me is uh, you got to have a hip name for your group, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's a, PM. Yes, imperative. <laughs> and the other one was what? Funky Deep. Funky Deep. And the last group was... The Main Squeeze. The Main Squeeze, right. <laughs> so I've learned you got to have a killer name. Um, I also learned that you've tried a couple different instruments, mm -hmm. right? You, you didn't happen on the bass. It was because your love of music that carried you mm -hmm. uh, to the bass. Mm -hmm. And now you're playing the bass for a living, mm -hmm. right? And the third thing is uh, you weren't scared to explore you know a lot of people are like oh i've got to stay home i gotta do here but you're like no i'm going to china <laughs> right the furthest place you can get from the states <laughs> literally 13 hours on a plane um but that's great that's awesome those those are some key points i've taken away from your story and um i think that's one of the reasons why this podcast is so successful our stories are vastly different, but the way we've arrived at where we're at makes it super interesting mm -hmm. and completely different experiences, which I think uh, students and people can benefit from. Mm -hmm. Right? I think when everyone has the exact same story, it's not that interesting, right? Right. 
It's like if you were to eat the same type of pizza every day for three years. At some point, it may take a year or two, but at some point you're going to say, I might need to try something different. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, it was good to learn about you. I I didn't know all these things and I've eaten dinner with you several times and done recordings and (laughs) been in the all over the place. And I learned something new today. So for those of you out there listening, thanks for joining us. You now know a lot more about Mr. Hunt. And if you ever need someone to go to China with you and play trumpet and come up with a funky name, he can do trumpet, euphonium, bass, whatever you need. You dig. He's got it. (laughs) This is Music is Business. What is this? See you later. This program is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council Agency.